Find peace faster. The only thing left for us is to fight. If we are going to die, let's die with dignity. Humanity will not hide. We will continue to fight forever. More than a century ago, mutations suddenly began to destroy humanity, turning the deceased into terrible creatures that wage war against the living. This catastrophic event plunged the world into the purification fire, a nightmare in the midst of chaos. In this chaos, individuals with extraordinary talents known as the Resurgence emerged as the last stronghold of humanity against the mutant horrors. In 2145, the mutated creatures united globally, forming an unprecedented force that pushed humanity to its final stronghold. However, an unprecedented massacre is currently taking place. Humanity is split in two like a broken sword on the battlefield in the last battle of the capital of Huaxia. A giant monster made of flesh with scattered eyes and sharp teeth crosses the field towards the human-sized mutant doll. They keep coming, said the third-level brown-colored mechanical archer. A boy with hair next to the third-level psychic supporter. A girl with long brown hair, mostly from the first and second orders, we who have awakened. Brothers have fallen. If this continues, even we of the Third Order will not last much longer, shouted the heavy hammer Third Order warrior holding the front line. Be careful because that thing has more tricks, said the archer. Raising his bow and getting ready as the creature advances, the fighters try to defend themselves but are enveloped by the monster's tentacles and lifted into the air. Give me a push, sister! I will crush these things to pieces! shouted the hammer warrior as the creature's teeth approached the mutant third-level psychic mucus hiding psychic power, answered the supporting girl with a distressed expression as the tentacles squeezed tighter and tighter. We are truly trapped here, shouted the archer. They all thought we were done with the look of despair on their faces until a few golden pieces emerged, piercing the creature and separating the tentacles into thousands of pieces. What happened? they asked as they landed on the next piece of land, looking at the large pieces of tentacles that had once been their prison. That's when they all turned around, and with shocked expressions and blood flowing on their faces, they could see their savior, a young man standing in front of a bright light, holding a sword as the wind blew his cloak. One of the talents of the divine level, they thought. And then they looked closer, exclaiming, Lord Yenning, He's a young man with short black hair and brown eyes. Don't be reckless, all three approached their savior, the archer said. Thank you, my lord, you have arrived. And the psychic supporter added, Thank you for your rescue, Lord Yenning, something has caught his attention. And the archer quickly raised his weapon, shouting, There's still a mutant right above Lord Yenning's head, a type we've never seen before. This presence seems very different and looking up at the sky. We can see a creature with many arms and tentacles, its eyes like a globe, surrounded by teeth on its chest, horns on its head, red eyes, and black and white lines on its face. Dare you stand above Lord Yenning, I will crush you to pieces, the hammer screamed. The warriors advanced and leaped towards the creature floating in the sky in a moment that seemed to last forever. The creature turned its chest eyes towards two members of the attacking forces nearby. The archer and warrior coughed up blood as their bodies began to transform and then vanished, merging into the air, leaving only their weapons behind. The girl observed everything from the ground, gripped by a deep-seated rage that ignited flames in her arms as she screamed, Damn it! I will leave! I will kill you! But before any attack was launched, the creature appeared behind her and struck her with one of its tentacles, However, in a matter of milliseconds before the creature's tentacle reached her, Yenning appeared, placing herself between them and blocking the attack with her sword. She leaped to avoid the tentacle's impact with her weapon as she thought, One move, two first-level team members down. This is not your average third-level mutant, so it still contains creatures that she commanded you to retreat first. I will handle this. The girl assessed the situation and thought, In a battle like this? I will only be a burden to Lord Yenning. She carefully replied, Lord Yenning, be cautious, and retreated to escape. The creature moved away, freeing itself from the beam, still holding its sword adorned with metal engravings. It watched as half of it fell to the ground, split in two, only to block the attack that destroyed my sword. Now I understand. It's like a mutant that has been simulated by the military multiple times. 
which should only exist in theory, a fourth-level mutant to fight against a creature like this. I must unleash all my power to fight against it, he thought as he walked amidst the flames of the battlefield, and then he attacked the ground around him with the force of his momentum towards the creature that accepted it with open tentacles. He launched an attack using all his strength. A powerful explosion occurred, and an orange light descended from the sky towards the hope of humanity. The rocks flew. The impact was too strong, but something was wrong. His gaze was downcast before he could bury his sword in the creature's head. The monster advanced, piercing his defense and getting close within a few centimeters of his face. What he asked for was unbelievable, and with a blow, the creature pushed him back, throwing him to the ground defenseless, releasing his sword as he fell. Blood dripped from his mouth as the creature walked towards him, and he thought sadly, so this is the Fourth Order. It seems we humans know nothing about the power of the Fourth Order. I will die. I failed to protect this world. I do not want to end like this. The creature's tentacles flew towards him, piercing his body, worms devouring his flesh as the tentacles rejoiced in their victory. Blood flowed at the control center. The commander watched everything happening with his team, pondering the last hope for the war zone, the divine talent. Was he truly defeated? With an armed force like that against us, how long can we fight? If only we find Yenning sooner, give him time to develop. Maybe we can avoid this nightmare. There is no other way now. We will go down fighting, unleashing all his frustrations. He slammed the control panel hard and declared all defense lines in this war zone broken. Let the Third Order Awakened bring the ultimate nuclear explosion. Even in death, we will die with dignity. Humanity will continue to fight forever. The helicopter flies across the sky carrying the warhead of a nuclear attack, which is massive. Those who bravely jumped into the air to become human bombs, giving others a chance to live, are now being honored by the team. Humanity is now using its last resources. It doesn't matter if they fall, they will fight against the world's destruction, explosion after explosion, fire consuming everything. The planet that once had abundant life now bursts. This morning's news is that it is the 71st year in the Doomsday Calendar. On November 6th, it is estimated that Project 337 for the construction of the Safe Zone will be launched today, breaking the news of the Safe Zone 67 in the East Sea being attacked by local survivor sea creatures, urging immediate evacuation. These are the first words Yenning hears upon waking up, still confused with dirty bandages on her body and torn clothes. She sits, thinking, my head is exploding. Didn't I just get defeated and killed? Then a voice catches her attention. What should we do? She seems to have woken up and turns around to see that she is inside a cell, lying on the floor with two people who appear to be guards talking. Someone said, he can't take the test because he's infected with the virus so he's unconscious. They are currently testing out there now, if he causes any disturbance later. One of them said the other answered, then kill him. Payment has been received. One of them took some ammunition and loaded his gun while walking and said, well anyway, he's just nobody. Not a descendant of those who have awakened or anything. If a little kid like him dies, just say he turns into a mutant holding a gun. He approaches our protagonist, saying if you stay down, you might have a chance to survive. Yenning confused thinking isn't this three years ago I reincarnated back to the day of the talent test. So the reason I couldn't be tested in my previous life is because someone ruined it. The guard then spoke quite a lot. Kill him. Yenning thought this time no. He immediately rose, disarmed the guard, and shot forward. Shoot one of them shouted. But with an elbow strike, Yenning pushed the guard away and then fired. Two shots that finished them both standing amidst the fallen bodies our protagonist remembers in my previous life. I failed the exam and survived as a scavenger wandering for three years before the army discovered that I had divine level talent. But by then it was too late. The war zone had fallen, and without resources for proper growth, even though I had risen to the third level in just seven months, I was not the strongest. But I still attacked first to fight against the fourth-level mutants that began walking through the corridors. Memories of his mother emerged, and with a sad expression and a downcast gaze, he thought of his mother, Zan. I apologize, I couldn't save you, I apologize then, with a determined look, he thought. 
But now there is still time as long as I pass the exam and become the strongest I can save the most important person to me and end this apocalypse. Next, the system connects a series of missions saying the Apocalypse God Sword system is now connected to the Yenning mission content. Please touch the crystal test within 30 minutes to unlock and activate the system. Failure function touching the crystal test will result in the system disappearing. After 31 minutes of completing the unlocking mission and activating the mission system, every sword-related ability you possess will be increased a hundredfold, turning into forbidden sword techniques. Observing the thoughts, this system is truly different from the standard doomsday system that everyone had in my previous life. Could this be my golden opportunity, perhaps due to reincarnation? Something has changed for the better as I grow stronger? Any system will do. I must hurry to the exam and then find out who is behind all of this. And the countdown begins, 31 minutes. A group of armed guards approaches while shouting, Who's there? Raise your weapon, be alert. Someone infected has escaped. Surrounding him with their drawn weapons, they order to stop where I can see them analyzing Yenning's target status, concluding that their leader is a low-level leader who has already awakened. The rest are just ordinary people. The best course of action now is to capture that leader and force him to get me out of here. Then using the weapon he took from the previous guard, he quickly shoots one of the guards, swiftly striking him with a quick movement. He teleports behind the leader putting the gun to his temple and leaving him helpless. With a cold stare, he declared not to move, and I will shoot his team. Then said, release the captain, don't attack the army recklessly in the safe zone is a major crime responded to by our protagonist. Take me to the testing ground. You have three seconds to decide, or you will die of shock. Everyone thought this kid had lost his mind. The captain then asked, what's going on? You're just an ordinary person wanting to take the test. And with desperation sweating, he tried to argue, wait, maybe there's a misunderstanding. Let's settle this. But without giving time to talk, Yenning just stated, move with the gun still pointing at his head. The captain continued with his hand raised, walking and said, boy, you're playing a dangerous game betting on the awakening. But even if you become an awakened one, you won't escape death in the open area. A large group of people gathered in an arena listening to a speech a hundred years ago in 2042. The apocalypse came and the world entered an era of disaster. Millions of people, almost one in ten, survived. That's when the first generation of the awakened appeared. Joining the army to save Huaxia today is an important day to test whether you have the talent to succeed and become an awakened warrior protecting the territory. You have failed, and you will leave here to start a life with Lea Tian the representative of the Tianfeng Military Commission in the safe zone. He welcomed everyone and began the test that is now starting with the descendants who woke up in one of the corridors leading to the area. A guard heard on his radio that the attention of everyone infected had been taken hostage and entered the testing area. An infected person had taken hostage and entered the testing area. All guards diverted their attention to what was happening. They approached, but before they could react, they were already hit and thrown to the ground. Yenning appeared walking with a gun pointed at the captain's head, while other guards stepped back with their weapons raised. Liu Tian, a man in his forties with brown hair, spoke into the microphone of his phone. Drop your weapon and surrender now. If you don't surrender, you will be shot on the spot. All guards prepared to attack at his command, the captain sweating in fear for his life and Yenning. He maintained the same cold expression even under pressure. That's when he replied, I am not infected, and I do not want to disrupt the resurrection ceremony. I am here to undergo the test. Catch him immediately! Leowen shouted, and the guards quickly approached, and Yenning dropped his weapon, saying, According to Article 13.7 of the Safe Zone Regulation, individuals with special rights who violate military orders commit a serious offense but significant contributions can override such violations. He remained with his hand raised without reacting, but as soon as he dropped his weapon, the captain turned and punched Jennings in the face, saying, Get up, do you think you're special? While another guard restrained him and hit him, the captain said, This is insane. It is audacious of you to discuss the article at a time like this until Leah ordered to execute it now. And above Yen, a man with a sword appeared lifting it above his head, ready to execute it. 
Suddenly a jet with a bright light appeared floating in the sky right above them. The captain wondered why there was a supersonic psychic fighter jet here, and the highest commander of the Tianfang military zone ordered the second grand marshal to wake up. The Shia high school student jumped down, dropping the man wearing a cloak when landing, causing a strong impact, making one of the guards think how strong the sense of oppression was. The test hasn't even begun yet. Why is the Grand Marshal here Xiao tall, with blue fire around him and a mechanical arm, then spoke, remembering the military zone desperately needed a high-level revival, and because he was willing to risk his life, let's see what he actually does if he fails to wake up. Execute him immediately, and with a smile on his face, still restrained on the ground, Yenning said, Arrange his test. Let's do it now. Zia ordered the others to disperse. Yenning could wake up around him. Everyone looked at him, wondering if they would really let him follow the test idea. It is absolutely nonsensical that A can become awakened. It's disgusting how the lower class always assumes they have the talent to arrange themselves. Thinking back to my past life. I was manipulated and failed in the exam, making mistake after mistake in this life. I will start from the first step of the exam. I will control my own destiny. Then Yenning reached out and touched the pillar of the exam with the palm of his hand. Making it shine brightly, waves of purple energy burst out directly from him. The organizers did not believe, and the other participants were afraid of the shining pillar's power reaching the sky in fusion of spiritual energy. A familiar feeling let's try as the energy is put into his body and the wind continues to blow fiercely. Classification begins testing. Current talent level D. Current talent level B. Lee observes that the system has not given a final decision and incredulously exclaims his level is increasing. Can this child have a high level of talent? And his level continues to increase testing. Current talent level A. His energy merges strongly with the lightning that strikes from the pillar as he feels the spiritual energy filling my body. This is extraordinary until he smiles and opens his eyes, which now become a neon purple ball. He stated that this test, Crystal can be infused with more spiritual energy, and he infused a greater wave of energy into the test pillar. Leah was confused and said that an ordinary person with a very high talent level, not one in ten million could achieve such a thing. He stated that the final test results have not yet appeared. Could he have a higher talent? The pillar continued to expand into the sky. It contained more energy than its level could contain, still increasing. Yenning put all his chips there, all his strength concentrated at that moment. No one believed what their eyes saw. Yenning screamed and somehow more energy emerged from him, merging with the crystal testing his current talent. The other candidates protected themselves, afraid of the pressure being too strong. Jia was fascinated by what she saw and thought something was wrong. The crystal did not declare the test over, which means the test is still ongoing. This person, who turned out to have a third-ranked talent, awakened his potential at this critical moment, taking his military strategy tablet. He ordered the deployment of ground-armored forces for defense to prevent mutant attacks deployed psychic fighter jets for military patrols to prevent accidents, closed all routes to the square to seal non-military personnel. The airspace above the pillar continued to glow into the sky with absolute intensity. Yenning screamed as loud as possible, and the impact of his power affected everything around him. Such an event had never been seen before, truly a unique occurrence. Until he stopped injecting energy, he remained standing still touching the pillar as the neon purple fire and smoke rose, the system finally announced that the test was over. Everyone was shocked to see that no one moved, no one spoke, only the sound of the wind was heard. Zia took a few steps forward and stumbled. She was actually a pure-blooded SS rank when the system announced the SS rank. Shia was still shocked, thinking that if the S rank was a reserve for the Third Awakening, then the SS rank could undoubtedly be the third in line. It seemed like all of Tian Fun would undergo radical changes. Then suddenly, Jia burst into laughter, saying, Great, great, ha ha, safe zone. Tian Fun had produced talents like this, while Leah grimaced beside her, trying to hide the fact that a few minutes ago she had ordered Yenning's execution. Did you hear that being praised by the Grand Marshal himself is like a dream come true? I am very envious of him. 
one of the candidates said people change so quickly. Just a few moments ago, they said he was feeling sick again. Another commented to stop saying that he might become a superior in the future. Another one added, then looked at his still glowing hand with high concentration energy, thinking that my talent theoretically is at the highest level of humanity, SSS talent ranking. I never thought the crystal test limit was only at SS rank. The influence of SS rank is already enough. What matters now is the Godsword system mission. So our protagonist opened his dashboard and looked at his status while sighing, saying, the mission is complete, wait a moment. Even with the efforts of the entire nation in my previous life, we only managed to achieve two S-rank skills and one A-rank skill. But now, can this system upgrade my skills to SSS level? The current mission on the dashboard details the sword skill acquisition mission, learning as many skills as possible. The mission rewards four attribute points. Warning. Disclosing system information to the outside world is prohibited. Elimination will occur if there is a violation. With a smile on his face, Yenning thought interesting. I have an idea on how to test this ability. But shortly after, a voice caught his attention right next to him. Shia approached and said to the student Yenning, Congratulations on achieving the SSMU talent ranking. Tell us what gift you would like, and Uncle Shia will surely get it for you. Facing Yenning's statement, he remained focused on the mission system in silence while Jia waited for a response. Leah asked Yenning, seeing that they were not getting an answer. Zia said, There seems to be no response. It looks like he just woke up so he's still in shock. Uncle Shia was stunned for a moment before saying, Come on, don't be like that. Come to my office to chat. After chuckling, he reached for Yenning's shoulder and guided him inside with Leah. Yenning agreed and accompanied them into the room. Jia explained the situation to Yenning while a young woman served snacks and a guard stood ready to support him. Yenning, you were trapped and almost failed the exam. That's why I sent someone to take care of everything involved. I will investigate everything and give you an explanation. Furthermore, I have decided to send you as the first candidate for the breeding program. Once the high-level verification is approved, there will be specific level 3 guidance and resources as well as equipment provided to you. Now, let's first talk about your talent, and Uncle Shia will help you plan. Xiao gestured as he sat on the sofa. I cannot tell anyone about the system, so I must only inform them about my natural talent, Yen Ning thought as she sat in the armchair and then responded to the psychic talent that crossed Xiao's telekinesis object. Arms and legs and said, oh, a paranormal talent is very rare. You may need an expert from the capital to guide you well. What gift do you want? Yen Ning answered, if possible. I want a book about sword skills. Commander Xia Jia turned and pointed to the guard, saying, It's easy. Take a copy. Choose the one with a higher level. After some time, the guard returned with the requested copy in his hands and said, Commander Xiao, this is the highest level among our reserves. Zia patted our protagonist's shoulder and guided her to take it along with the book in her hands. Yen Ning expressed her gratitude. Commander Shia, if there is nothing else I would like to return and smile, the commander said, do you want to go back and tell your family the news, I understand? Then the commander turned to the guard in the room and said, go some elite soldiers must accompany Yen Ning at all times to ensure her safety, if there is a problem report directly to me also. I want to see a report why Yen Ning almost missed the opportunity to take the test within 24 hours. No matter who is involved, capture them first and talk later simultaneously. They all answered yes. Supreme Commander, and bowed respectfully in the pleasant security zone TN. At the sixth meeting point, a military vehicle was passing through an area lacking resources attracting the attention of the residents with their belongings on their backs. Yenning said that all of you can stay here. I can go home by myself. And the guards waved to let her go. Hey, look. Isn't that yawning? She's causing a big problem. She just arrived in a military vehicle. Some commented on her arrival, speaking softly. It must be something if she's escorted by so many people. Some woke up, while others commented on seeing a girl carrying trash outside. Yen Xian said, and even from a distance, her voice could be heard. The girl turned her face, and when she saw her, she exclaimed in surprise, Sister, that's Ying's little sister, right? Yawan saw her sister after so long she was overwhelmed with emotions.
thinking, I can't protect you before you forgive me in this life. I will never let you suffer again. She ran towards her, hugging her little sister with all her love and attention. The little girl was confused and didn't understand because for her, this was the first time all of this was happening. The sister said, We haven't seen each other for over a year. Weren't you at training camp? How did you get out with tears streaming down your face? Yenning answered, My sister already took the test. And Xi'an stepped back, smiling, asking, Yes, why are you crying? Answered by her sister. I am just happy to see you, the girl, holding hands and bouncing, saying, Sister, let's go home quickly. Mom is very worried about you since you left. Walking joyfully beside her sister, our protagonist replied, Of course, let's go together and surprise Mom. She picked up the bag she was carrying, and the girl said, Brother, look, I'm lucky today and got more stuff. We can go and get a piece of cake as a treat so that brother can eat well today. Smiling, our protagonist said, Silly girl, we will all eat well today. With a pure expression of happiness, the girl replied, Really? Is there meat too? Yenning said, Of course, as much as you want. At home, Yenning set off to prepare a feast with various foods from the supplies she brought. Wow, there's so much food, sister, her younger sister exclaimed, looking at the food in front of her. How was the awakening test process? Many neighbors asked. Her mother inquired as they sat at the table. I passed by mom. I'm already awake, she answered with a smile on her face and joy in her eyes. Truly, her mother asked, while folding her hands on her chest with a bright smile that was reciprocated by Yenning. Firmly, while her younger sibling jumped in celebration and said, Yes, indeed, my sister, you are truly my pride, leaning on the girl's table. She asked her sister, Since you passed away, can our family eat food like this every day? To which she happily answered, Yes, you can. A few hours passed and they were both already in bed. Yenning watched her family sleep soundly. Closing the door, she activated her system, opening the transparent blue window, which now said, Mission accomplished, four attribute points have been obtained. Skill level C detected. Skill sword stabbing detected skill upgrade successfully. Increased to level SSS storm sword skill energy. Blue surrounded her as a mini sword-filled ball floated in her hand. She was surprised she thought it was really upgraded from C to SSS, even though I have seen many things in my previous life. I have never found anything on this scale after the energy transformation was completed. Yenning sat down and continued to analyze the system, saying so one usage requires 4,500 points of spiritual energy. Wait, and lean back in the chair. He began to analyze thinking if I did not calculate the equipment bonus using the storm sword once theoretically, I should reach the intermediate level 3. Fortunately, I can use that skill every 48 hours, if not. Even if all my spiritual energy is drained from my body, I cannot use it at all right now. But the problem is, the system does not allow me to disclose any information related to it, so I cannot explain the origin of my skills or powers to others. In other words, before being promoted to the second level, I must avoid using the storm sword in front of others, then tapping the table. Our child said, okay, now is the critical time for the commander to include me in the program, so it's better not to cause trouble. But this is a high-level skill that I have never seen before in my life. I really want to use it right now. And with his right hand, he held the skill field, watching it, until something crossed his mind and opened his eyes. He affirmed, yes. Isn't that in the military area with a satisfied smile on his face as he remembered in his mind the world apocalypse full of spiritual energy underground spaces randomly appearing everywhere with the entry of awakened individuals and relevant information about underground spaces gradually being gathered by humans, especially the military spending a lot of effort and resources to research and develop their underground test spaces, using them for real combat training for their troops, compared to naturally made underground spaces. Fatal dangers can be avoided in the test underground spaces, and safety is done extremely in its journey by wearing a long white hooded cloak. I thought I could go to the test underground spaces and try it out directly, arriving at the Three Tower building. He was in the test underground space of the Tianfeng security zone inside the military base. He found himself at the teleportation point in the middle of the blue light pillars, 
please open the low-level underground prison for any type of person. Okay, Yenning stated the staff members recognized him and thought this was Yenning, the person who acquired the SSS level. Talent commander said we can open the underground prison for him, but then asked anxiously, shouldn't you go with someone with your current strength? It's very dangerous to enter alone. Yen already has the activation device in his hand and presses it. He replied, I will only do a small test. I will be out soon. Gradually, his body disappeared into a light that was like a blue light surrounding him until he was transferred to the underground testing room. The system showed that the danger level was low and the view was of a city looking peaceful, as if it was made right after the apocalypse. So, the weapons provided in the underground prison were a dagger, and looking to the side, he saw a blue rectangular box. He put his hand inside it and could feel the weapon being pulled out. He took it out while smiling, with his other hand in his pocket, and thought, Exactly what I want. The weaker the weapon, the easier it is to test my abilities. Then he felt the presence of a creature watching him, sneaking behind the wall. He quickly turned his attention to the creature, seeing it leap and attack. The creature was a mass of flesh with large teeth and eyes. Its head, you arrived here alone, thinking of seeing that creature attacking you without a group easily avoiding the attack. Our protagonist said, give me points. And then he stabbed his dagger into the creature's eye, which fell to the ground defeated after a few seconds. It's quite satisfying. It's hunting time, he thought, walking while holding his shining sword, ready to find the next target, continuing his journey through the underground space, walking carefully, looking for the next creature. Slowly opening the door, our protagonist met another giant monster, this time a monster with four small eyes and two rows of lower teeth. There's another one, he thought, as the creature approached with its mouth open drooling hungry for human flesh. With a punch, he hit the creature, followed by a kick that knocked it down. The creature spat out black blood while lying on the ground. As he thought, even though my current physical condition is not ideal, the combat skills I acquired earlier make these zombies easy targets. It seems to really test my abilities. I must enter to interrupt his thoughts. He saw the escalator next to him and said, Let's get out of this building using the stairs after passing the boss area store. Should be on the right square when Yanning advances, a series of zombies appear, following him more and more creatures paying attention to his presence. No matter how fast he passes them, oh great, their numbers are increasing rapidly. Unfortunately, no matter how many regular zombies you kill, your spiritual energy will not enhance our protagonist's thoughts because a horde of zombies is following him for a full hour until jumping and climbing onto the bonfire. Through, he declared, I still need to find his boss, and I have to get rid of you first. He ran on jumping over walls until the system announced boss area warning found, boss area warning found. Standing in the middle of the main square, no small zombies approaching them seemed scared, only wind and dust surrounding them, until finally a loud rumbling sound echoed and the system announced level one. Mutant corpse devourer coming quickly. Yenning turned back and saw a large crab-like creature landing heavily its impact. And despite its appearance, Yenning involuntarily realized how fast it was. That's when he started running and said to himself, if your skills are not as strong as needed. The creature climbed up, jumping onto its shell while doing a backflip. The air and directed his dagger to attack and finish the sentence. No matter how embarrassing it was, you just left the underground space as the blue light continued to emanate from the dagger. The information system skills were ready to be used and he immediately activated it with a large beam of blue light shot from his dagger towards the boss, projecting concentrated energy towards him. The ground hit by the laser coming down from the sky and the creature shattered as the concentrated power melted its shell. The impact causing a huge explosion that immediately raised dust and opened a large crater. This is how the sword storm ended with just one blow. Yenning wondered, observing everything around him, if I didn't come to test his abilities, I would never know how strong he is with this power. Even the weak second-level mutant can be eliminated. And now I'm just at level zero with a smile on his face. He opened his status panel, which said, You killed a maximum level one mutant. 
Five spiritual energy points obtained from the underground space test, 50% reduction. Yenning then commented, The experience provided by the underground test space all comes from the spiritual stone military region. They are not as good as those in the regular underground space. Another reward is the equipment called nimble hands, observing his status, he said. I have never heard of an underground test chamber that provides equipment before from where it came from in this apocalyptic world. The common level 2 resurrection might not be able to obtain a complete set of white equipment, so not even one item is not a bad start to my mission. Here is complete, and I am lucky to get some equipment. It is useless to stay here longer to leave the underground chamber and then go out and press the body device gradually transported back to the base. I'm done with this token, thank you, Yenning said as he handed the device to the staff member who took it and looked at it thinking he left so quickly he must be scared by zombies. Right when he left, someone caught his attention by saying, Who let that group enter the underground test chamber? Didn't I say they couldn't enter this underground test chamber? Too hard. How many times did I say that? Why don't you remember that? Then the staff member shyly scratched his cheek and answered, Brother, actually, no group entered. We didn't dare. The commander replied that there is no group that did not enter. Then how can the mutant die even though its equipment is left? It is impossible for level two that is awakened to become so bored and enter this underground space. That's when the staff members realized what had happened and fear approached and said Inning is the only one in the underground space. Earlier he said he would test something. Could he want to test whether he could defeat the underground prison? Boss walking back to his home which was already in his district. Yenning passing through the regional market streets where he heard the merchant saying, Selling weapons, selling weapons, give me seven and one half kilos of flour and I will give you twenty rounds of ammunition. The other said half a kilo of fried grasshoppers for sale on credit, while looking at him thinking, although I can easily defeat the maximum level. One mutant, the situation is still terrible in the corner of the street. Three children stealing a drunkard's wallet, one of them warned when the patrol came when the police approached the scattered group. While the children are running, trying not to get caught because of the crimes, and the guards are shouting, Whose child is this? Be careful! The children scream and run, observing everything, thinking about the disaster that will happen a year from now. The safe zone of the celestial wind will turn into a wasteland and corpses will be scattered everywhere due to a massive attack by a large number of level 3 mutants. In ten days, there will be a zombie uprising in the urban area of the Celestial Wind City. The wave of zombies formed by the Celestial Wind City will then attack the safe zone of the Celestial Wind. The danger looming over my mother and Jian is still there. I need to become stronger and faster at night, in the headquarters of the Central Army Group, in the safe zone capital. A meeting is taking place where a group of leaders is discussing an important report that has emerged about the SS-level talent found in the safe zone of the Celestial Wind. Everyone has read the report, and on the big screen, information appears showing his photo and SS-level talent status as a pure-blooded talent prospect. One of them, at the end of the big table, shouts that there have been many casualties among Level 3 recently, so it is advisable to add such talent to the ranks. Let's add another one properly. We need to speed up training and get all the necessary resources as soon as possible. The person at the far end suggested what if we directly put him into the capital military area and give him a top commander instructor, which was immediately responded to by the mustached man. Are you trying to break through the insurmountable gap between level three and four? The long-haired and white-bearded man replied. Even our top commander cannot reach this level four because we were not trained with the best resources from the beginning. The mustached man pondered for a moment and stated that yes, starting like this is a good idea and worth trying, and it was immediately agreed upon. SS level talent Yaning was selected for the seed program and will be trained as the main prospect. He will soon be transferred to the capital military area, one of the military personnel proposed. One of its leaders said, I object. The other immediately asked, Why are you rejecting such talent? And one of the leaders intervened and said that the fourth military area will start debating again. Finally, the bespectacled and sarong-wearing man who opposed the idea expressed his reasons. 
Isn't it that you read the last paragraph of the urgent report he woke up the psychic system in 70 years since our records began? There has not been a single level 3 psychic system. Those who have awakened the psychic system have the weakest physical abilities. They are usually in a supporting position without protection from other awakened ones. Fighting alone is suicide, while for a solo promotion, mission from level 1 to level 2 depends on luck, and from the maximum level 2 to level 3. As you all know, the number of successful promotions is zero. Everyone remained silent, and then the commander-in-chief declared it true. Let's underestimate the importance of very valuable resources and cannot be wasted the next day. Commander Shia received a response from the headquarters. The selection of potential candidates for Yenning was rejected, and its importance was underestimated. Well, the psychic system cannot reach level 3. The potential evaluation is only equivalent to level A or even lower, its significance is not too high. The guard then asked Commander Jia if we still wanted to give him the same treatment as previously decided. Yao placed the Jenning file and answered that we absolutely did not. It has been confirmed from above that he does not have the potential to cancel his initial plan of withdrawing the personnel sent to protect him. The guard also asked who was obstructing the Yenning test, which was interrupted due to the suspect's suicide. Do we still need to continue? Jia leaned back in his chair and replied, I agreed before because of his potential, but now that he's gone, what else needs to be investigated? The guard signaled that he understood the order and left to inform our protagonist, who was already in the Yenning residence area. The guard conveyed the news to our protagonist in a very sensitive and subtle manner by saying, Yenning, the final decision from the experts has been sent. Your potential is only at level two, and the safe zone has canceled your plan. There is no need to participate in the seed program. All warnings have been given goodbye. Yanning remains unresponsive and only watches the guards leave with military vehicles while thinking about how things are. Maybe my potential is only at level two. My talent is as high as level SSS, even though the test shows level SS, which is enough to prove my potential. I see the safe zone surrounded by a large number of mutants at the moment. All awakened psychics are still considered trash, and the fact that those who are awakened cannot reach level 4 because their psychic statistics are insufficient, so they have to train their psychic systems is still unknown. I did not expect that in this world something like this would make the veterans unable to see my true value. If I go to the capital, tell them that I am a level SSS talent and psychic awakening is the key to reaching level 4, well, no one will believe my words. What I have to do now is find a way to quickly restore my strength to level 3 so all these problems will be solved. I have the Sword God system. I have a sword storm at the beginning much better than my previous life. Yenning puts on her headscarf and continues her journey. At a different time in the wild forest, the awakened team saw Yenning entering the forest and said, Hello, armed man. Want to join our team? Let's unite to hunt level one mutants. You will gain some experience with success. Follow us. We will keep you safe. The protagonist turned with a rifle slung over his back signaling to decline the invitation and replied that level one mutant team does not provide much experience to start with so many people. How can we get enough? No, thank you. Frustrated with the dismissal, the boy insisted, Hey kid, you dare. We see you alone and want to help you, but you really don't know how to appreciate it. Don't forget how big the world is now after you own it. We kindly invite you. Don't you think your attitude is too much? The group approached and surrounded him, but at that moment Yenning stared at them with a very cold gaze with a bloodthirsty aura coming out. Yenning stated mercilessly, the boy immediately froze and scared, thinking, Ah, your eyes are so cold as if I'm being watched by a wild animal. All three of them stepped back, and as Yenning walked away, all three of them watched her only thinking about those who had faced life and death multiple times having eyes like that. This young man was truly strange, walking towards the depths of the forest. A dark aura emerged from the road alone. Yenning said, Now this decaying forest is one of the most dangerous places outside the safe zone of the celestial wind. If I remember correctly, there should be two level one mutants in the deeper forest area. 
and one of them is a maximum level 1 mutant that will be promoted from level 0 to level 1. You have to kill three level 1 mutants in the underground test room. I killed a maximum level 1 mutant. Although his experience was halved, it is still equivalent to a normal level. I have to kill two mutants in this forest to level up. That's when something caught his attention. The intention of an assassin quickly approached him and took his weapon. He turned around and said, I have to try not to use the sword. A sword storm can kill them in one move. I not only need psychic experience, but also need to strengthen my physical abilities. And he hit the mutant with the handle of the gun, crushing the creature's head. I must change this stereotype in the eyes of the veterans, not just for myself, but for those who are able to reach level three. They must find a way to rise mentally, or it will be too late when the level four mutants arrive, he thought, remembering the mutants who killed him in the past. I must find a way to make the veterans realize the importance of the psychic system beyond the forest. A group of young people are talking. Did you hear the sound of gunfire? One of them asked. Could it be the young man? Another answered. They're coming from somewhere near the demon tree. It seems he's not far from here. Everyone run. Don't look for the requested advantage. The child asked to die. The leader shouted, quiet, clean the area and two tree roots rose, knocking him to the ground. The system informed the maximum level one mutant. The demon tree is coming. The level one binding mutant is coming. Our protagonist is surprised, thinking two at once. The large demon formed by tree branches with a mouth full of teeth and red eyes appeared in front of its opponent, Yenning, wondering where the other tree demon was. It approached roaring loudly towards him. The only thing I could feel and see is what is in front of me, Yenning thought, trying to detect something more, something different, he thought when the demon roared quickly. She began to attack him with its roots, launching several attacks against our protagonist, the ground beneath her crashing into thick branches that he avoided by jumping so quickly from side to side as he dodged the branches. Yenning remained vigilant until the demon disappeared from his sight making her wonder where it went. He looked up. A giant creature appeared and landed on the ground, causing a great impact. He barely avoided being crushed by the monstrous body as he dodged while sliding on the ground, raising dust. He said to herself, Can that big and huge form really jump? And secondly, has it not yet appeared? Is it planning a sudden attack? No time to escape. No time to think. I can only hold and then grab the rifle handle. Yenning prepared to strike, hitting the demon with the gun barrel. The blow made the monster collide, and the second unit quickly appeared. A small creature full of thorns with red eyes emerged beneath the mouth of the green devil tree. Ying immediately caught the attention of the small creature, which was pulled back, and black blood spurted from the giant creature as a result of Ying's blow upon landing. In the field, our protagonist thought that what our team had just seen could easily defeat the level 2 mutant, but we did not expect to face two level 1 mutants. All team members were severely injured, and we even lost two. If the second one was not hidden well, we would not end up like this. In my previous life, the Devil Tree and its binder were killed by an elite military team. Their words at that time made me misunderstand. I always thought the other one was hiding somewhere but the answer was right in front of me. The binder was on the body of the devil tree. The devil tree, which was a tangle of roots and branches with teeth and red eyes, kept roaring, while there was a small blue dot on its neck indicating the second creature observing Ying concluded. It turns out that the roar of the bind is a power buff from the tree demon, but it seems not to last long. When the buff is refreshed, the tree demon takes a step back with no change in its movements. Its attack pattern remains the same as before. If I am correct, it will jump towards my side again. As predicted, the large demon jumps, making our protagonist smile and say, After I've revealed your plan, this trick has become your greatest weakness. The binder jumps onto the monster. Our protagonist runs along its body towards the center to find the binder. Drawing out his dagger, he focuses his power, golden electric energy taking over then directing it towards the small creature that gradually severs their connection. Yenning cuts the veins connecting the binder to the tree demon until they are separated. The small creature in his hands, the binder appears as just a large eyeball. 
When you are not connected to the tree demon, you are a very weak binder, Yenning declares. Then he crushes the creature in his hands, clenching his fists with all his might. The tree demon roars with hatred and quickly attacks, unleashing its roots towards him. Yenning continued to pull out its blade, still emanating its golden energy, with a sharp gaze on her face as she cut the demon's roots into thousands of pieces, making them fly in the air. Walking towards its main body, she declared who could imagine that without the buff from the demon's power binder, the demon tree would not reach its maximum level as it saw. Knowing that its end was near, she fought with all her might, roaring and dancing with its roots, dirty with black blood dripping from its target. But she kept chopping continuously until the large demon turned into just a tree trunk with cut branches standing in front of her. Yenning declared to stop fighting the demon tree, bid farewell, and with a precise strike directed her blade to its eye, which exploded as the pieces emitted bright light. The system announced that you have killed the level one mutant binder, gaining psychic experience. You have killed the maximum level one mutant tree, gaining psychic experience. You obtain materials from the white demon tree bark. You acquire the equipment of white dead tree armor and white giant claw. You obtain the psychic fruit, observing its benefits that are calming. Even though it's not ideal, it's still good combat practice, and I gain something from it. There is a psychic fruit and a description of the fruit stating that the psychic fruit has a white, undead effect when used. The user's constitution will permanently increase by one point and also provide a 20% increase in HP recovery rate. Do you want to use it? Answered by our protagonist, yes, activating the item's use. It shines like a small water ball in his hand while thinking about how many have awakened to level up just one main level, adding four points after defeating both bosses. I have slightly improved. The results are quite good. A group of young people intending to help are still hiding among the trees. Could one of them have been shot? One of them asks about the psychic pressure from the boss that has emerged, while another says that the second level has awakened. The third, who is crouching, asks if anyone else is here besides us and the boy. The person crouching then says that the boy looks very unpleasant. When we found it, was it possible that he was the one who didn't make sense? Thirty minutes had passed, and now Yenning was in the center of the heavenly city, more precisely in the safe wind zone for purchasing mutant materials, walking towards the store carrying the bag she had placed on the counter when the seller greeted her. Is this the material you want to exchange? Responded by our protagonist, take everything and give me a price. While the seller analyzed everything he thought, although I could also use the channel trading system, there are no resources that should be wasted at this level. Money needs to be handled carefully, so this type of trading is more suitable for me. Another shopkeeper approached after analyzing the material. She was a blonde-haired woman with bright eyes who said, Hello, the four pieces of material you have come from the maximum level one mutant. They can be used to make armor and offensive equipment. The estimated price is around 697 credit points. Since this seems to be your first time with us, we can buy your materials at a special price for new customers, which is 700 credit points. Yenning heard the offer and analyzed it in this apocalypse. 700 credit points can buy more than 200 kilos of meat or hire seven or eight mercenaries to work for you. That's a very high price, she thought. Then she replied, yes, let's close the deal. The merchant answered, the credit points have been transferred, please check. Handing the card to Yenning, another merchant said, we also work with equipment and firearms supplies. We even offer customization for special customer needs. Do you need anything else, sir? As he took the requested card, our protagonist asked, do you have a skill book? The merchant responded that we have it, but its level is relatively low. In fact, there are only rank D skills here and throughout the heavenly wind safe zone. Generally, other merchants immediately asked if he wanted to buy them and then asked to see after analyzing the available skills. He thought even though I don't need to worry about the power of the skill, modified by the system, the effect of the modified skill is still closely related to the original, so I can't just choose random skills like Swordstorm, 
even though it's very strong, there is still a slight delay in activation. It's not flexible because the area it covers is very wide. If I meet agile, high-level mutants in the future, once they successfully escape from the sword storm, they could face me with a smile on their face. The merchant approached and said, You don't like them, my dear customer. Actually, if you're not in a hurry, we can transfer skill books from another safe zone for you as long as you're willing to pay the handling fee. We can find a rank C book, and if you don't specify your request for a rank B sword skill, it's also available. She smiled gently and replied, No need. I want this sword cutting skill. While thinking, I want to see what the acceleration skill can turn into with a confused expression. The seller wonders if someone who can sell level 1 mutant materials is very interested in this useless skill. Could it be that he is just rich and stubborn? There's no reason to think about it. Then, with excitement, the seller declares the sword cutting skill 600 credit points, giving the skill book to our beloved customer. After placing the book in the gift box, the merchant handed it to him, saying, This is your purchase. As Yenning left the store, the merchant thanked her and said, Take care, please visit us again. Walking with her bag, she thought, I still have 100 credit points left. Let's buy some delicious food for Xi'an. While observing her status window open, before returning home, Xi'an celebrated happily in front of the canned food on the table, saying, Brother, why did you bring so much delicious food again? Yenning took out more supplies from her bag. When he spoke, I was already awake. Haven't I already told you the last time that good things will continue to happen in the future? Well, I have chosen some snacks just for you. Indeed, in the apocalypse, it's not so easy to ensure survival. Even snacks have become a sophisticated luxury. Confronted with this, his younger sister exclaimed with a smile, Wow, brother! I heard that only officials have snacks at home. No one in our area looks at snacks with joy. She held a can of soda, patted her sister's head, and said, You will have plenty of them in the future, too. That's a promise. After putting her sister to sleep, she saw her curled up in her blanket, holding her teddy bear, thinking, Mom won't be coming home from extra work today and Xi'an is already asleep. It's time to learn the skills. Sitting at the kitchen table, she opened the sword god system with the skill book she had bought in front of her. The strong blue light shines, and the system announces that the skill book for skill level D of the sword slash has been acquired. The skill slot currently has two out of four skill changes. The Skylight Sword Slash skill level, SS, small point of light surrounds it as the system displays the skill description for our protagonist to read. Our protagonist says, There is a 600% increase in agility, and although it is only momentary, it can still make a big difference. I have truly made the right choice. Next, I still need to find a place to test this. Where should I go? Ah, I remember. And then he bends down, opens the drawer, and takes out a gas mask. When it comes to speed, this place is most suitable. He states, wearing special clothing with a utility belt and a mask. Two hours later on the outskirts of the original heavenly wind, a place where the strong wind splits the crumbling buildings, creatures wrapped in those structures while water seems to touch the entire ground walking through the area. Yenning said, it seems like in my previous life or in this life. This region is a place where no one comes. It is the central district of Jingguan, a ghost town. In his mind, he remembers a previous battle against a giant worm in his past life. While thinking, he accidentally discovered a hidden level 2 mutant here that could almost reach maximum speed and agility. It also had very valuable blue equipment. As something caught his attention and tried to move, he realized that the water under his feet had turned into sticky slime. Looking down, he realized he was trapped. That's when a new presence drew his attention behind him, purple in color. A moss-covered mutant emerged quickly. Turning around, he saw the creature advancing and leaping towards him. The creature's mouth widened open in various directions like a foreign toothy flower, reaching for its scythe. Calmly, he swiftly dodged and decapitated the mutant in one go. The creature rolled over and he looked at it, thinking, fortunately, it was just a zombie. If it is a crawler, the consequences would be disastrous. 
fighting it in this toxic swamp would be hell. Then, entering the warehouse, he declared to us, I must relocate quickly, but in the corner of the warehouse a large worm was already waiting for him. The worm attacked swiftly, swinging its tail as Yenning tried to dodge and think. As I fought this in my previous life, I was already at level two in using the respective blue equipment. A collision would cause injuries with such physical strength. If you are a little slower, you could be torn apart by the climbers who are already outside trying to escape. He looked around and thought if I remember correctly the climbers should be around here. There should be something like that in my previous life, maybe I didn't pay attention. Then this could be a good material to make a trap. He then pulled the iron gate on the wall, creating a gear mechanism facing outwards while waiting for the monster to appear. Until finally, a strong impact occurred behind him, and the worm emerged roaring, thinking that the hidden elite mutant had indeed appeared. Yenning stood in front of the metal teeth, pulling the creature towards him, crashing into the wall with full force, causing its teeth to get stuck in its body while Yenning dodged. I must handle this quickly in case the climber appears again and you fall into my trap so quickly this trap really worked, said our protagonist. But shortly after the presence of the second one drew his attention, there was something leaping quickly between the buildings and the system, announced the arrival of two mutant climbers at the intermediate level, another worm with red eyes, long mouth, and blue skin appeared, making Yenning curse. I finally fought both at once, the climber leaping at an unbelievable speed, forcing Yenning to be twice as vigilant and wonder why it seemed faster than in my previous life. Because the principle of darkness under the light, if you are too close to the climber, it will be easier to avoid the next attack. But the time of the charged attack is unpredictable. There is no time to think about it. The climber's attack must be avoided, and the elite mutant's attack can only be fought. The thick, purple-skinned worm attacked him with a headbutt that hit Yenning full on. Our protagonist tried to block it by bringing both hands in front of his body, but in vain his blood spurted while cursing. This trap is really unnecessary now. The damage is even greater. The iron that was stuck in the monster now hit Yenning, and one of them got stuck on the side of his body, causing his blood to flow, tearing metal from his body. He said, even though I came here to test my abilities, the current situation is dangerous. If I use the sword storm, it would be much better, but now it seems there is no way to clear the field with one strike. The sword storm climber is too fast and won't be hit by the storm to perfectly avoid two mutants at once with zero level of physical strength not enough. So the only skill that can be used is Celestial Light Rift. But like a sword slash, it is a single target attack. The two creatures roared on the battlefield when suddenly an idea crossed Yenning's mind. Wait a moment. I remember that in the skill description, it was said that the attack is accompanied by a sword aura that runs at full speed. Our protagonist pulled the climber while thinking, Although I don't know how long this sword aura will last, it is safer to estimate based on its minimum length. If nothing unexpected happens, by adding the length of the arm plus the minimum length of the AA sword, even though it is a single target attack, it should be enough to attack two mutants at the same time. Then, jumping and spinning, he used the sword slash celestial light rift, causing a shock. A blue fragment burst from it and expanded towards the explosion monster. The light was very strong, and then both creatures exploded in black goo, causing a rain of black slime on our protagonist. Landing in the middle of the mark left by its attack on the peaceful ground, he said, I have successfully killed both of them. This was a very good attack, and not only could it cause irregular destruction effects on our protagonist. The first target was hit, but the AA sword also had a regional effect. I should have avoided taking risks and attacking both at the same time. No, that's not it. The special effect of the attack may not have been activated yet. This skill needs to be learned better. Then the system sends a notification in a transparent blue window in front of it. You have exceeded the level and killed two medium-level mutant climbers, gaining a large amount of psychic experience. You killed a high-level earthworm mutant, gaining psychic experience. You obtained white crawling leg material. You obtained blue agile core material. You obtained superior blue wind claw equipment. Observing his gains, his comment was, Although I am taking risks now, the rewards are worth it. 
Meanwhile, in the area of the Celestial Wind Guard Station, the military wind was blowing. The control center is in chaos as the assistants shout about abnormal energy fluctuations never seen before. The alarm is sounded, and other employees approach, asking what is happening and why the alarm suddenly went off. The response comes quickly. Abnormal energy fluctuations detected on the outskirts of the city. Could it be that someone on level 3 who is awake is acting in the outskirts of the city? One man in the room looks distressed and states that none of the level 3 individuals in our heavenly wind military region have records of leaving today. Could it be a visit from someone in another military region or a special operation from another country? We must send someone quickly to investigate. Twenty minutes later, the investigators witness a battle where Yenning is fighting against two mutants wearing special decontamination suits. They discuss that this is the first time they have seen traces of a battle like this. I don't remember any level two individuals in the nearest military region who could use attacks like this until one of them collecting samples says, wait, look at this. Based on the remaining energy, the psychic energy activated by this person's skills is at least 4,000. Others lean in to get a closer look and state that to use such power is immense. You must be a prominent level three middle name to be able to move without being paralyzed in a place that collects samples. Quickly respond well to this is truly an emergency. This exceeds the authority of our department. We must report it immediately to the commander. Our protagonist is walking through the heavenly wind security zone. Garbage piles up on the streets as people walk with coats to protect themselves from the constant wind, observing its statistics stated with your abilities and attributes. This is the best equipment you can find for 60,000 credits in my previous life. I hope I can sell it at a good price in this life. It's already night, and he's walking home while sitting in front of his computer. He says it's late, so I'll check online directly to his trading form. He announces his product, and soon a notification of potential buyers appears. A moment has passed, and someone is already interested in this equipment, which is no less popular than the previous one. Yenning commented in her heart, Hello, I want to buy the Ripping Windclaw. Can you give me a good price? The message said, 60,000 credits, no bargaining. Our protagonist responded directly to the core issue, not understanding the meaning of no bargaining. The man replied, Friend, can I use other resources, equipment, skills, or food for partial payment? But another offer came in immediately. Are you still offering? The brother added, I'll add you as a friend while the other said, let's discuss the details, it will be a price you will like. The other offered only 30,000. Don't smile, Yenning said. With so many people wanting to buy, it seems I don't need to worry. Yenning then gave in to the power of bargaining and stated, if you really want it, the credit must not be less than 30,000. Other resources are okay for the equipment. I just want something related to swords, besides psychic fruits will be the best offer. On the other side of the screen, a muscular man with spiked shoulder pads, bare-chested underneath and long brown hair, smiled broadly as he said, The best equipment like this must be obtained even if I risk everything. He then turned and shouted to his friends, declaring, Let's look in the inventory for equipment, especially if there's something related to the Swordmaster class. The team member in a reddish-brown jacket responded in unison, Yes, boss, we will make sure it's done in 30 minutes. Later, the team appeared frustrated with a mountain of equipment that seemed not to meet their boss's expectations. The boss said, All the equipment we could find is here. The muscular man gazed with his face resting on his hands and stated, I feel this won't be enough. I need to make a deposit first to secure the equipment. He then ordered to withdraw the money and quickly after Yenning received the message that the deposit had been sent, leaning back in his chair, our protagonist thought with a smile on his face. This person really loves this equipment. In my previous life, my mother and Xi'an were always afraid of dying and never did a single good deed. Today, I have these resources. If they face the same difficulties, what's the point of my return? I must ensure that they can live the best life. On his phone, he could see a message from buyer Bob that the remaining money was being collected and would arrive on time tomorrow. The next day, at the Heavenly Wind Real Estate Company. The brown-haired assistant greeted Yenning with a gentle smile as she entered the apartment. What kind of apartment are you looking for? 
Yenning replied. I want the best you can offer. Well, hurry up because I don't have much time. What properties do you have available? She asked. Looking around, her younger sister was impressed. Oh, this place is so luxurious, she thought. The salesperson looked her up and down and thought, Level zero who dares to come here to see your property can't even afford a brick here. Impatiently, the shopkeeper said, The best property we have is worth 40,000 credits, which is very expensive. You can go there and see for yourself. The others are priced at 2,000. I have other clients to attend to, she added. Yenning smiled and said, No, if it's only 40,000. I am able to make this transfer directly, which impresses his younger sibling who is not used to hearing such a large amount of money. If you have the money, let's transfer it directly. We should do it now, the person said, expanding the credit machine towards him with a rough voice. While thinking, he looked poor, but he came here talking about having money. If you don't have money, just leave and don't waste my time. I opened his bank account and saw that his current balance was 13,000 credits. I immediately asked him to wait a moment, just a few minutes, to complete the transaction. Rolling her eyes, the woman said, Sir, you don't have money. Are you trying to deceive me? Your time is surely very valuable, as if you could get tens of thousands of credits. But soon, Yenning received a message saying our boss is running out of time. I collected 39,375 credits, as well as some equipment and psychic fruits. Can you check if that's enough? Our protagonist analyzed everything and said, Despite all the white equipment, it's almost a complete set, and he made sure the deal was done. That's when he directed the phone to the store clerk, who only widened his eyes when he saw the notification that said 39375 credits had been sent, as he said, I can pay now. With a completely different attitude, a friendly and cheerful smile on his face, the shopkeeper said, Great, young man. You are truly promising and very young and rich, so I was momentarily stunned. Would you like to make the transfer, or should I find someone else? My brother can do it. I can do anything as long as you ask me, said the protagonist. My honorable brother, please come to my VIP room. I will be ready to serve you to ensure your satisfaction. And finally the transfer was made, and our protagonist and his sister entered their new property which was decorated like a royal house with arched doorways and chandeliers coated in gold and porcelain. The amazed girl asked her brother, Are we going to live here? From now on, our protagonist answered, No, you don't need to search in the trash anymore. Shan, take the key so we can let mother in later when she hands the key to her little sister. The little girl asked her brother why he didn't come with her, and he replied, I have something to do and must go out again. Walking and jumping across buildings, our protagonist kept thinking there were only a few resources left after killing the climbers, so I have to make the most of this moment to redeem it. The only choice I have now is the Corpse Academy, which is the only wild underground prison outside the safe zone that can produce high-level psychic mutant fruits. The heavenly wind has been cleared by the army. There are a few remaining drops that are automatically refilled, but only for those who are currently at a low level of awakening. No one has reached the maximum rank in the underground space yet, which means the prize is still available. There are also level 2 mutants in the underground space, and special rewards based on completing the underground space with SSS level skills. With my skills in hand, I can definitely defeat them using their standard settings and jumping from high walls. Our protagonist lands in front of the academy, and the system quickly informs him, asking if he wants to enter the Level C Underground Corps Academy. The current Level 2 Underground Prison restrictions are immediately answered firmly, and the system states that the successful combination of 14 people will open a portal to the expanded underground space area, opening up a large area in the sky while announcing that the Underground Corps Academy will begin in one minute. Inside the academy, a group of awakened people are waiting, and Jennings recalls everything in his mind. The current scene does not show any abnormalities or special events. There are mutant zombies and a small group of humans in the underground space. The underground prison scenario takes place seven days after the apocalyptic outbreak, and a large number of humans have turned into zombies and occupied the old academy after completing the basic mission. 
you are allowed to leave the basement room system, then inform the current basic mission, survive in the academy for 12 hours during this time. You cannot leave the academy mission, rewards, random white equipment, optional plus four psychic experience mission to kill the fragmented female corpse. Difficulty level, killing mutant butcher. Difficulty level, C, killing all zombies. Difficulty level C alone in the quiet corner, observing all mission specifications. Next to the board, a blonde boy speaks hello, everyone, I am thin. Someone has finished this underground prison before I have done it once, if none of you have experience with it. I can recommend myself as your leader. Then another boy takes the initiative saying I heard this underground prison is very difficult if you have experience. You can lead us with a hesitant smile on his face. G.A. answers, the difficulty of this underground prison is considered moderate to high among the two basement levels. If we cannot work well together, we are doomed in his mind. He remembers the twisted zombies and terrible creatures in the basement. Everyone is impressed by his words until he realizes Yenning is separated from the group and calls her. Version 1. Hello there. At level 0, you remain silent without reacting. And then G.A. approached with a certain mockery in his voice, asking if you entered this dungeon because you have a death wish. Do you know that this is a level 2 dungeon? Our protagonist stared at him with a killer aura and a cold gaze without saying a word. G.A. awkwardly smiled, a drop of sweat trickling down his temple, thinking, Damn, why does this level zero look somewhat eerie? Then he said, If you came here as a level zero, we can't protect you. If you can't handle it, just run and don't cause trouble for us. It's okay, stay with us and gain more experience. After all, you also need a chance to grow but the basic reward in this underground prison is just a white equipment. G.A. then spoke to the other group members, saying, I'm sure you're all here for a challenging mission. Please remember my warning this morning. Never accept a mission because the will to understand. I do not understand that the last time I was here, so I took two bosses. As a result, most of my team members died just through the efforts of two maximum levels that were built. We could hardly pass it when he spoke. G.A. can remember the bodies of his friends lying on the ground among the pieces of creatures while he looked at them in surprise. I was half scared to death. It was useless to look back. It was at that moment that Yenning cut through the entire atmosphere, saying to himself if he looked like that, his attributes were still quite low, so I think the psychic fruit cannot be saved from what I know. Many who woke up at level 2 only have 18 strength points after taking the psychic fruit but now I have reached 17 points, almost the same as the general level 2 that woke up, which added two SSS level skills. I can definitely destroy this underground prison, and as his blue aura expanded, radiating from his body, he clenched his fists with a smile on his face. G.A. continues to give instructions to the other awakened in the room, saying the protective shield will soon disappear. Everyone should choose the fragmented woman's body. This boss mission is a level 2 intermediate mutant. If we are 14 united, we should be able to face it without too much trouble. The others who woke up immediately responded, saying we will follow your orders, leader. The woman in black next to her with long black hair and straight bangs said in a sweet voice, Leader, if there is danger on our way, please help me with blushing cheeks. G.A. replied, Don't worry, I'll make sure you are safe. Then the group set off following G.A.'s instructions, saying, Get ready, follow me. But when they turned down one road, something caught everyone's attention. The woman pointed and said, Yes, isn't that in front of us? That's when they saw Yenning rushing ahead of them, when they said that Level Zero was rushing alone. Oh my, what is she? Does she want to die? Someone then asked, But what about us? Will this affect us? G.A. quickly grabbed her shield and raised her hand to encourage the group. He mentioned that he was only level zero, don't worry about him. Follow me and don't disturb us. Keep the formation focused. Let's go, keep moving quickly through the dungeon, climbing the stairs, looking for the boss, until he finds two human girls screaming from the top of the stairs. Big brother, please help us. We don't need much time for the girls to turn into creatures resembling creatures with many distorted shark heads, snorting in some ways. We are trapped here. Can you get us out? Please leave a trail of mutants on the floor. 
passing through fake humans who thought in my previous life, my teammate thought you were in the underground prison. The NPC offers a side quest, so they stop to help you. As a result, they are attacked by you and brutally eaten until they die. I will never forget that scene. The easiest way to get good equipment in this dungeon is through the mutant meat seller that I have to visit. Go to the roof and find him to lure out the hidden boss. I can use a storm of swords and finish everything at once. Meanwhile, on the lower floor, a group of awakened people hide behind the wall, as Gaw says this junkyard is the breeding ground for fragmented female corpses before taking action. We must avoid engaging with other enemies carefully as we advance from one point to another. He leads the team as he explains his plan. The more monsters killed in front of the underground room, the more ferocious the fur behind. It's better to fight the boss directly after killing the first boss. All the monsters in the dungeon go berserk at that moment. We must hide and wait for the buff to wear off before continuing. When they are in place, the scrap items between the cars can be seen and the boss in question. The masked woman declares with our leader here, this underground prison should be easy. The archer quickly interrupts, saying calmly, Look over there, that's the boss, and the underground prison system announces the level 2 medium. The fragmented female corpse mutant comes on top of a pile of muscular cars. The woman wrapped in a red aura with disheveled hair still looks closer. It is seen that her body has some holes, and her eyes have the characteristic red light. Her teeth are rotten and bloody, while in her hands she holds the skull that we have passed, knowing that we must act quickly. When the woman looked in their direction, they said, I am the type of person who perseveres. I cannot help you. You must handle this quickly. G.A. stepped forward with his shield and took the front line. I am an archer. I will lead, said the archer, while the other two, who were paranormal types, positioned themselves beside him, and the last one with claws and a knife in hand, said the leader. Move slightly to the right so you don't get accidentally attacked. The attack was directed straight at the boss, while G.A. remained in the same place holding him back. The time has come thought G.A. with a smile. Then, as he stepped back, he released a ghost that jumped into the sky and pretended to fall backward. The ghost landed on the shoulder of the archer, who screamed, leader what's happening, while his head was swallowed by the ghost's mouth. Why did the boss come to us? They cried in desperation, which G.A. responded to in a deceptive manner. I'm sorry, I didn't control it properly. Archer had already fallen under the ghost his blood spurting and his twisted body lifeless. Then he stood up again with his shield raised. He swung the ghost's body into the air and declared, Now everything is fine. Please continue to attack as before while on the roof of the school. Yenning is looking for the main boss wondering where the mutant butcher should be here. Why I don't see him. Let me check his mission. Yes, wait a moment. The mission to kill the mutant butcher has also disappeared. If I don't take the mission, then who will do it? Then it's on the battlefield where the junkyard appears when a series of explosions occur. Creatures emerge dragging their swords to the ground and creating sparks leaving those who wake up with a terrifying expression. A large mutant with a silent hill style, the pyramid head sword appears making them stumble. The second boss, mutant swings his sword cutting everything in its path. It is a massacre that occurs. Why? Why are you here? They ask while in the midst of battle. Gauss smiles evilly thinking because I secretly accepted the mission as a defense type that was awakened. I am naturally unable to achieve high DPS. It is difficult to get good equipment by completing dungeons. But if all my teammates die and the boss only has a little HP, I, the last one standing, can deliver the final blow. And even if the score isn't high, I can still get good equipment. GA still has its character standing and shouting who took the mission. Is it the new level zero who just ran while kicking the back of that damn ghost? That person wants to kill us. One of them cursed remains steadfast. G.A. runs towards the butcher and says, I, Georgia Yun, will never let that naughty level zero kid win. Coming with his shield raised and energy concentrated, he prepares an attack to strike. Speaking to the other team members, he says, You don't need to worry about anything. Just do your best quickly. Without any suspicion of betrayal, they all respond in unison. The blushing female leader whispers, 
You are so kind, observing everything happening in the junkyard from above the wall. Yenning was confused about what was happening and said, Hey, you want to try to blame me and take the equipment? Not a bad plan. Unfortunately, you chose the wrong person. Yenning opened the system status window and said, There are two hidden bosses in this underground prison. At that moment, two additional missions appeared before her, and she accepted them. Two bosses appeared beside her, one resembling a demon bone structure and the other looking like a three-eyed worm without its fangs. Yenning smiled and said, Don't just stand there. Come and play. The bosses rushed towards her, and she jumped to the pile of debris in freefall. She thought they were chasing her in berserk mode, which was good. That's when Gaw noticed her presence and looked up. He immediately wondered why Yenning was there. Another boss had captured the others who had awakened, crying for help. But it was useless. Tentacles covered their voices, entering their mouths and wrapping around their bodies until their bones snapped. Gaw trembled in fear as sweat drenched his face. Terrified, he asked himself what this was. Then Yenning touched his shoulder, smiling, and said, Hey, don't you want to play? Let's play with these four bosses. Desperately, Georgia shouted, You, you accept all the missions. Yenning responded provocatively, I must be the scapegoat worthy of you. G.A. quickly backed away. You're crazy, he said, thinking. I initially planned to deceive the Awakenings and defeat the bosses in the last three hours, but my plan was completely ruined by the cursed level 1-0 gaze. Turning around, he suddenly started running, shouting, Everyone follow your leader! Everyone ran up to the roof, making everyone confused, even the bosses. Okay, they all gathered in this school building. It's more comfortable, Yenning thought, as the Awakened Ones followed G.A.'s orders and ran to the school. After entering the building and closing the door, the group immediately became scared as they looked out into the yard and saw Yenning standing there. You're level zero, you're running fast, one of them said. If you want to die, I'll grant your wish. Don't involve us. A blonde awakened one with a headband declared, drawing his sword and advancing towards Yenning with anger in his eyes, showing no difficulty at all. Yenning avoided the attack by simply moving slightly to the side confused thoughts swirling in her mind as she wondered what was happening. It was impossible for someone at level zero like her to dodge my attack. Just as the boy landed far in front of Yenning, I stood in front of everyone, asking if her friend had died at the hands of the butcher. I did not accept that mission. That was when the group realized what was happening and said, You deliberately let that fragmented woman's corpse kill Jiang Ta'a, whom you wanted to use as bait. Enjoy the exclusive experience alone, seeing yourself cornered and surrounded by a group planning to kill you. G.A. was sweating and trying to change the subject by saying, Now is not the time for internal fights. The boy accepted all the next missions that the mutants would carry out. Follow us soon. We must defend this place to have a chance of survival. The woman then spoke up, defending, How can we survive? We cannot withstand four powerful level two mutants. The ruler of the corpses there has not yet appeared. At the second level peak, one of the warriors unleashed a burst of anger and interrupted his shout, saying that this building cannot be destroyed unless there is a third level except for the fragmented female corpse. The other three heads are too big, so they can only climb the building outside. The bosses are marching up the building at high speed, raising their hammers and waking up to declare their plan. We will be divided into two groups. One group will block long-range attacks from the three mutant groups, while the other group will block the entrance to the fragmented female corpse, and the horde of zombies will appear. A horde of disabled mutants will break through the door towards the group, swinging the hammer towards the mutants and covered by their energy aura. The awakened aura screams that if we leave alive, I will definitely destroy the head of Jia Yun, and the cursed level one quickly turns around saying, you can survive until the end. The bosses approach the group, each announcing their strongest attack, a relentless barrage of fire blasts, ice punches with raised hands, creating ice and fireball attacks. They focus all their energy to bring down the bosses. The resulting explosion raises dust and stone fragments, but when the dust settles, the bosses reappear unharmed, unbelieving. They were wondering what our combined strength couldn't hold back. 
To keep them from thinking this is impossible, I was almost out of energy watching all the chaos, holding her shield and saying, it's over this time. It's really over. Then, with a provocative smile on her face, Yenning said calmly that everything is ready. If you want to live, then jump from here with me. And she positioned herself in the building's ditch, ready to jump when a strong wind blew past her. What she surrendered, they wondered when they saw Yenning really jump, watching her in free fall. They said, damn, she's crazy. A coward. Trash. But then, amidst the insults and still flying above, Yenning did a backflip FP in the air and activated her ability, causing powerful energy waves, blue lightning running around her in the sky. The pressure of her aura was extraordinary, making them comment on how strong the power of that so-called level zero woman was. As she left, the others asked in disbelief how this was possible. Gaw shouted, still in disbelief, holding the hammer, then hurriedly leading the group, saying, we will still die. Let's take the chance. Come on, follow her. And she ran towards Yenning, followed by the group, watching them tremble and thinking I'm afraid of dying in a worse way. If I jump, I am a defensive type, so I might defend if I stay here from above Yenning, watching the standing silent in the middle of the mutants, and said, Gaiyun, you are right not to jump while raising his sword. He declared a storm of sword waves of blue shockwave lightning spread hitting the building directly from the point in the sky where Yenning was at raw and concentrated. G.A. Force watched his shield shattered and the light blinded him. As he exclaimed, this is the bosses destroyed one by one, and the group wondered as they tried to hold on to something if this is what can be done level zero. Immediately after the attack ended, Yenning landed on the ground and with a friendly wave. Asked, are you all okay? The boy with the headband quickly bowed respectfully and said, Master, forgive me. I failed to recognize your greatness. I spoke very rudely to you. I heard that there is hidden blue equipment inside the fragmented skull of a woman. Before the person holding the hammer approached and said the number zero, the level of the dog I mentioned earlier, this is not about you. Yenning quickly replied, It's okay, no problem. Can you find all the zombies that escaped and face them? They all then bowed and answered in unison. Our protagonist immediately jumped from the building saying, It's time to go. Surprisingly, everyone without an active gear blushed and touched their chin, saying softly and shyly, He's handsome, strong, and young. The girls looked at him with frustration and said, Your brother's tip is a lie. Go land on the ground. Yenning said, in my previous life, I heard that there is hidden blue equipment inside the fragmented skull of a woman. In a vast field where it seems difficult to find, something in the distance caught his attention. A small blue light shining towards it. He thought there, and after touching it, the system informed you that you have obtained the blue equipment. The skull of hatred effect, psychic control, psychic examination instructions should be placed on the forehead for use with a satisfied smile on his face. Yenning said, this skull is very suitable for the psychic system. The main reason why the psychic system is always underestimated is that they cannot condense movements with clear destructive power like others who have awakened, then place the skull on his forehead. He thought with this buff, the psychic system's revival will soon occur. A small blue light appeared from his hand. Then a very powerful force took over his mind, making his eyes turn into two deep light blue balls. His mouth screamed saliva as energy emanated from his skin, too much energy that could be contained until finally he adapted and raised his burning gaze with blue fire. He thought psychic control. Looking at the stone next to him, he lifted it into the air with just a movement of his eyes. Then he practiced the famous cursed speech technique, Tog from Jutsu no Kaisen, and uttered the word burst, causing the stone to shatter into thousands of pieces. With his hand raised, he ordered the shards to remain still, and they floated in the air motionless at the same time, the place where they had broken. He expressed his face again, and the ground beneath him was hit by piercing hail that opened holes observing the results. Yenning commented that his strength was good enough. When I level up, it will become stronger. Let's try a psychic examination. Then touched his forehead with two fingers, bringing a small blue flame. 
He closed his eyes and received system information showing the location and image of the nearest person who woke up. It seems that the current limit is about 29 meters, but that's enough for now, he commented, ending the test in front of him. The system sent a notification that all zombies in the Dead People's Academy had been eliminated. The underground prison of the Dead People's Academy. All missions have been completed. The exit is unlocked. After exiting, the rewards will be calculated based on performance. After exiting and being transported outside, more announcements have been made. The underground prison has been completed by completing the underground prison. Y Ning 100% underground level. SAS reviewed the list of prizes and commented that the prizes were quite generous. I can sell all the white equipment online afterwards. Then, the long-awaited event happened. The system notified her by saying, You have leveled up to the top of level 1. Please choose your level-up mission as soon as possible. Yenning quickly said, For full integration of the blue equipment, let's first check what I got. A black vortex appeared in front of her, and she received the thunder boots. Reading their specifications, Yenning said, A ten-point increase in agility again, which makes me excited based on agility. Let's put them on and complete level two mission. Our protagonist is not a fan of famous sleeping actions, so she immediately headed to the next stage of the mission called the Celestial Wind Mission. Arriving at the central reception building in the middle of the night, the receptionist welcomed her and asked, Hello, which mission do you prefer? Upon answering the level up mission, the girl yawned. She asked from level zero to level one on the right and opened the options window. Yenning stated, I want the fourth mission of level two. The girl was shocked and asked, What did you say about the fourth one? Are you crazy or am I dreaming? Are you really at level zero? She laughed and looked at his profile in the registry. She said, It seems like you're dreaming. Do you know you can't skip levels to do missions, even if we ignore the fourth one at the same time? Have you lost your mind except for the twin system that everyone must take one mission at a time? Right? Knowing the serious punishment if you fail a mission? Yenning then touched the blue classification ball and stated, If the mission fails, 50% of the main stats points will be deducted. If all missions fail, I will become useless or even die. I am sure I can live with the consequences. Classifying his strength, he put some of his power into the ball. A big blue explosion occurred. The girl leaned back, trying to protect herself while the system classified her as a level one peak, ending the demonstration. Yenning raised his gaze, leaving the cracked ball behind, and asked, Can I take them now? The girl looked at him fearfully, seeing the ball shattered, and answered, Yes. That's when a new presence appeared. Isn't this the SS talent level? Yenning turned to see who called him, facing a topless man showing off his muscles. He said, It's too late. Your level is zero, and I'm still here to take the mission. I wonder why you work so hard no matter how hard you try. Your psychic system will not produce something good. Captain of the investigation unit of the safe zone of the heavenly wind, Hang Xia, then waved her hand trying to avoid the scolding while saying that Senior Ying actually then a group of young people appeared and said in unison reporting to the captain everyone present, then Hang Xa turned to the group and declared loudly that a level 3 battle trace had been found at the Dead Academy. The superior has ordered us to conduct an emergency investigation. Everyone be alert, let's go. Yenning watched everything with great interest knowing that it was their own doing that we were trying to track. The place used to be a zoo. Now it's just a gathering place for crow and vulture carcasses waiting for their next meal. The group followed the commander walking towards the gate when one of the students asked the commander, why aren't we working together with the safe zone of the heavenly wind? In the past few days, they have been sending troops everywhere as if they were looking for something. Could it be for the same reason as us? Jun Zhang, the awakened level three commander, answered, very likely not. He was a big man carrying a large spear and had scars on his face. My son, Hong Xing, has just been selected for a program, so I just want to help him get the blue equipment. It's okay besides the heavenly wind that has been abandoned by the superiors. Because it's a talent level SS, there's a touch of bitterness in the pleasure. Moreover, isn't this the weakest moment? The commander spoke, looking towards one of his subordinates. Yes, commander. 
the subordinate answered with a smile. Is this information really there? Will mutants at level two peak reach level three here? I don't want this whole journey to be in vain, said the commander. Don't worry, commander. The information is indeed correct. Tiger carcasses must produce blue equipment, one of the subordinates said enthusiastically. Great, let's go, said the commander with a smile on his face. As he walked towards the zoo, he declared that you must stay away from the other monsters. I will face that carcass tiger alone. They all answered in unison. Yes, Commander Yenning, observing the surroundings and analyzing the mission from the top of the building. Thinking about leveling up my mission, two of them were in the realm of the dead. So somehow I had to combine the two, activating the psychic check and touching his forehead with two fingers. He could see far. That's when he observed the group and the commander approached and thought, This is bad. There are others who want to steal the monsters and there is a level three among them. Suddenly the commander looked in his direction with a cold gaze, surprising him and making him deactivate his ability as quickly as possible, thinking, Damn, he almost caught me. This won't be easy if I'm really robbed by them. My mission will fail. Then he jumped from the building, saying, This can't happen. I have to act fast while a group of students encountered a large, muscular creature, a two-headed dog with large claws, and a giant bear. It was a zombie dog and a bloodthirsty bear. Be careful, they stated as they entered battle formation. All individuals are fighting one by one, keeping them away from the commander, moving cautiously to buy time, said the leader of the archers as they dueled. The creature come here, sister, has a bone. One of them woke up, said provoking the dog while holding a shield. Ah, Ru and I will handle the dog agreement corps with a bloodthirsty bear. A man with concentrated ice energy in his hands spoke next to Aru elsewhere. Present a strong aura, the environment vibrates, and vision becomes blurry. Commander Jen thought the pressure was so strong as the tiger carcass behind it, the creature immediately appeared, a giant red furry tiger appeared with glowing eyes. At the moment, the commander declared to emit blue energy with a smile on his face, taking a fighting position and preparing to attack. He crouched as the skilled tiger roared with open teeth and glowing red eyes, observing from a distance while thinking it seems like level three is there with the blue tiger corpse. I have to complete the mission while for the blue suit. Even though I really want it, it is not ethical to steal it. It is not reasonable to fight against the awakened level three. But if he can't defeat it, then observing the battlefield layout, following his analysis now, his monster is not only scattered, but the distance is also very far. I only have one chance to use Celestial Rift if it's too far. There are variables that I might have to choose the right moment for the tiger. Advance fiercely, and Jen maintains her posture, creating a tornado with her spear. It was a fair exchange of power. His attack on the animal made it angrier and threw it to the ground. A display of light and explosions occurred. The impact destroyed the wind, dust, and silence. He raised his arms to protect himself, thinking he was strong. He must have a double power system and agility. Jen raised her spear, summoning some lightning and launching a precise attack on the animal making it roar in pain, its sharp teeth visible as electricity flowed through the entire explosion, gaining momentum. Jen launched herself, leaving the creature falling to the ground, but the creature immediately retaliated, pushing her away and making her fall to the side, blood dripping from her mouth. The battle damage was already evident. The commander then said, as expected from a monster close to level three, energetic, it seems there is no way out of this without special moves. Gathering all his energy, the commander ignited his spear, saying, Wildfire! He ran towards the tiger with neon blue eyes, performing a large fire slash that burned the surroundings and brought it to the ground. The creature fell with its claws up as the blue fire lit up, and the commander gasped for breath, leaning on his spear, saying, Finished! Your group continued to struggle hard, but once they realized that they had achieved their goal, they spread the news saying the commander succeeded and did not need to continue. I will cover your retreat, another shouted near the bear quickly, and found the new commander shouted away from the dog stopped chasing me. This sister dog went to see the movement of the Yenning group still hiding in the trees, thinking this distance is good. It's time. But then there was something that caught his attention, making him widen his eyes in worry. He turned around, 
thinking no. That tiger carcass is level three on the battlefield. Everyone was surprised to see the tiger rise again with a killer aura and red like red dust rose. It seems I have no choice but to face this Yenning's thoughts, seeing that the wild animal approaching the group fiercely, he drew his sword and declared celestial rift causing a deep straight line of light to cut through it. The commander looked confused, seeing the intensity of the creature's power being hit and cut in half. In his mind, he acknowledged this as a three-level intermediate three-level high three. Right in front of him, two creatures fell to the ground defeated, confused everyone asked who they were, dust gradually settling, revealing that the body of the giant tiger also lay next to Commander Jen couldn't believe it. His subordinates shouted loudly. Commander Mutant, our tiger commander's body immediately shouted back angrily. Stop! Shouting, I can see it myself trembling and engulfed in incredible anger. Jen thought to himself, Damn, someone dared to steal my mutants. This person must be stronger than me. I can't fight them now. I have to go to Commander Shia Engin Sergawi for an explanation. Yenning jumped down from the top of the zoo wall and quickly retreated from the area without letting his presence be known. His reward was reported by the system, and after reading it, he asked the panel to show the attributes of the blue equipment gloves of hatred. The tiger landed on the ground, he read its specifications and smiled at how great the equipment was. No wonder the level 3 commander wanted it so badly shortly after he equipped the gloves to activate its energy and continued his journey. Now in the Celestial Wind Investigation Unit, Captain Celestial Wind. Safe Zone Investigation Unit Huang Xia A was yawning while leaning back in his chair, muttering curses. I examined the Academy of the Dead all night, and just like the last time in the Wild Forest, there are no clues about this mysterious Level 3. I don't know if it's true. Just then, an assistant appeared calling out to him in an urgent tone, saying, Captain, right after our investigation, we detected two Level 3 psychic energy signals at Paradise's corpse again, hanging himself, slamming the table suddenly and declaring again. And there are two whether our celestial wind found a level three nest. The captain rolled up his robe and began to walk, giving orders. As he adjusted his hat, warning everyone to get up and G.A. quickly if we don't have clues, we'll be in big trouble when Commander Shia returned. His subordinates immediately answered yes, Captain. But from where they were, Zia's voice could be heard shouting out, it was Commander Jen accompanied by two others from her group, spear in hand leaning on the ground. Isn't this Commander Hong from Zhen Zhang? Our Commander Xia went to the defense line. Why are you so agitated? Said Wang, approaching and responding to the call. And who are you? Can you speak to me? Jay asked. I'm Hanging Xiao, Captain of the Celestial Wind Investigation Department, a skilled worker under Commander Xia's command. Zia is not here, so maybe you can talk to me first and I can see if I can solve this problem. He answered with a slightly arrogant, annoyed, and impatient smile. Jen took a few steps forward and declared this morning I went to the corpse heaven to kill the tiger corpse. I want the equipment for my child, but when I managed to get it, I was robbed by level three from your territory. His facial expression clearly changed as he thought about the corpse heaven. It seems that the Hong Gang is one of the two level threes we detected, pointing a finger at his face. Jen approached him more aggressively and said, I told you, the level three from your territory has no manners. They just robbed me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Pushing Jen's hand slightly to the side with a mocking smile on his face. Commander Hong, are you joking? Everyone knows that our heavenly wind only has one level three commander. Commander Saya and Jen stated, I know, I'll tell you, it's no use. I'll go straight to the defense line and ask for an explanation from your commander. Let's go and she walked towards the door, followed by her group. This is serious. It seems like I have to report this to Commander Wang, he thought, looking at the commotion. He hurriedly contacted Jia, who was on the phone, and said, What did you say? The Heavenly Wind has another mysterious level three, and they are capable of robbing Hong's gang. With a worried expression and gritted teeth, Commander Shia said, One or even several level three S hidden in the Heavenly Wind. This is a big hidden danger. Investigate it now. Not the time to worry and cause panic. Hong quickly replied, Yes, Commander. I will send people to search the entire area for records of the sale of that equipment at another time. 
At the Youth Education Center, taking a break to snack while reviewing the mission description, there are still two remaining missions, the Wind Eagle and the Survival Wind Eagle. Then I can level up and get wings online. It's not difficult, although rare. Basically, it's a low-level material. If someone is lucky enough to get it, they might not use it much and might sell it. Still eating, he sends a wing request, quickly responded to with an application saying, Hello, do you want Wind Eagle wings? How many are you offering? This is something I can get for you. Reading the proposal, he thinks to himself, This person doesn't seem very reliable. But time is the most important thing. No need to linger in this conversation. So he makes an offer. Oh, so how about a fixed price of 800 On the other hand, the boy reads the proposal and thinks, 800 That's more money than one can earn in a year at this level. It's clear this person is a negotiator. I have to work harder, he thinks. Then he makes a counteroffer. 900 no less. I worked hard to get this, he says while still eating. Yenning comments to herself. Is he so desperate that he's awkward? Our protagonist then delivered his rehearsed speech and said, If I read correctly, you're only at level one. What are you fighting for, Eagle Wind? You will surely find this somewhere in nature, right? Despite seeing my character, you want to manipulate me. You don't even know the market price. Yes, I'm in a hurry, but not anymore. If this doesn't work, you can keep it for yourself quickly. The boy bowed, apologized, and sent a message saying, Yes, I will stop talking now. Let's settle for 800, as you said. With a serious expression, Yenning said, A man should not be too greedy. Then he wrote the following message. I changed my mind. I can only give you 400. If you don't sell, someone else will hurry to sell it to me because he's running out of options. The boy, with tears in his eyes, said, Okay, it's done, while holding the feather. The wind continued to blow in the space area, and Yenning continued to review his mission plan. Now, all that's left is the youth education center in the underground prison. They say it's different from other underground combat rooms. No one has been able to reach the SSS rank because the test itself is not a fight, but psychological. Standing on the edge of the building, she looked at the system, asking her if she wanted to enter the underground teenage education center. She quickly responded, Yes, and as a red light guided her to the underground room, she stated, I will take this opportunity to test how strong I am physically when entering the underground room. The first thing Yenning noticed was the change in the color of the sky, no longer blue, not bright like daytime or dark like night, but red like blood. Looking around, she realized she was not alone in the underground room. People of various ages were trying to stand up and recover. My head hurts so much, said Huang Xia, a girl with bright hair and a purple coat, as she tried to help a boy lying on the ground trying to get up quietly. It was Fang Yuan. The underground prison was very strange. Even the teleportation was different, commented Liang Teng Fei, a boy who was already standing and seemed to recover faster. My name is Li Ping, the top level one in the system. Your collective desires from the will system will be directed towards Li, a middle-aged man adjusting his glasses. The atmosphere of the place resembles a horror movie with the red mist that seems to be always present, as if blood is constantly there. Besides the will system, what other questions will be asked? Who else will choose this mission to level up? Answer Lang, yes. Our system is known to be weak in battles. We cannot defeat ordinary mutants even if we join forces with others. Wang began to speak but was interrupted by Li, who raised his hand with an awkward smile and said, Indeed, children, even though we are weak in battles, I am confident that this underground prison will test our will, so we definitely have a chance to succeed. I have experience with these two underground rooms, so what do you think about me leading the team this time? Hang quickly responded, Uncle Li has great experience adjusting his glasses. Li smiled and asked the young man behind you to remain silent. Do you mind? A smile indicating indifference. Yenning replied, No, I'm just in a hurry. Can we start the system and display the mission panel? The mission is triggered to find hidden ghosts in Fanga High School and seal them. Mission clue one is to determine the ghost's location. Mission clue two is not to believe lies. Mission clue three is that after the sealing charm is applied, if the ghost is not found, the mission will be considered a failure with instant elimination. Liang trembled and exclaimed, 
Are such things really exist in this world? While others in the group hid behind him, Lee was reading the mission specifications as he explained, Don't panic. It's called a ghost. But it's actually the willpower contaminated by psychic energy before their death. Basically, it's a variant of the willpower attribute, but ghosts are still strong. They can not only protect themselves from physical danger, but also control the willpower of others. According to the first mission clue, we have to pass through the building and look for clues. If you find it, don't act hastily, run away, and ask for help. I have a method to handle this. Before continuing with the plan, Hang commented, Uncle Lee is very reliable. Lee nodded and said, Now we need to search for the archives in the classroom and teacher's lounge. We need to form three groups. Miss Nona, you are weaker, so you will be with me. Tung Fei will be with Fong Yuan, and Yen Ning will have to search alone. If you find anything, please share it with the other group members. Do not hide any information. Yen Ning went to the archives and conducted a thorough search while crouching on the floor. She muttered, Practically empty, just some newspaper clippings. When she picked up one of the papers from the floor, she could read a clipping that said, Professor Ta suspected of harassing Wang Fang and Wang, who suddenly committed suicide. A shadowy figure appeared, a hunched woman with black hair and red eyes hanging in the corner of the ceiling, watching her as she read, advancing towards her. He shouted, filling the room with fear, maintaining his composure while wondering if it was the ghost of the woman. Next, he crouched down, activating his powers and a few purple rays emanated from him as he confidently declared the complete transformation of Willow from the Willow Tree. The purple energy completely enveloped him, extending towards the spirit that soon crossed the window and disappeared, leaving the glass behind. Was he escaping? Was it just a test of his will? Yen wondered, leaning against the broken window. Messages began to appear in the group chat. Hang Xia said, Uncle Lee and I found a report from a year ago about a fire in the teacher's dormitory that resulted in the death of several teachers. Tangy commented, I found a contract that forced the school to compensate for psychological damages. The only signature was from the Wang Fang family. Finally, Yen added, After the fire, there is a note that the school invited the priest Toist to install a protective seal. A year ago, there was a case of an attack at the school where the victim was Wang Fang. It was suspected that he committed suicide, and the attacker was believed to be Professor Tao Li, who was holding a flashlight next to Wang. After reading the message, he stated that the clues were clear that Wang Fang was attacked by the professor, and his family requested compensation, but failed. After his suicide, he turned into a ghost, causing fires and seeking revenge. The priest then sealed him, but now the amulet has come loose. Our mission is to find and seal Wang Xia again. Please inform everyone and ask them to gather in the 2011 dormitory room where the fire occurred. I believe the amulet must be there. They stopped for a moment with suspicion and wondered why this reason was too simple. How could he determine the old dormitory and then say Uncle Li was right? The ghost was Wang Fang. Let's find them. Fang is hiding behind trembling when something makes her scream. What is it, Sister Fei? It seems like something is following us. Liang, sweating and desperate, said, Wang Fang, help us! While a great darkness chased them, in the teacher's dormitory, three others had already gathered. Li said they hadn't arrived yet, so I will wait outside. Both of you go look for the hanging talisman, the door lock is stuck. I will try to open it with my will, but before he could try, Yenning led the way, kicking the door and throwing it aside. Both were impressed and asked if his ability was from the will system. While already inside, Yenning said it's better. Wong squatted and took the small talisman, smiling and saying, Uncle Lee, we found the talisman. Yenning shone a flashlight on it. But in the silence, our protagonist thought about the human-shaped footprints. The talisman fell into the teacher's dormitory, so he turned around to ask for a hanging. Shia's clue mentioned something about the teacher who died in that room. The girl answered, No, why are you asking? That's when they both appeared, running desperately chased by a female ghost shouting, Uncle Lee, help us! The female ghost chased them. Fang stumbled when the ghost touched her shoulder and screamed in desperation. 
while the spirit let out a terrifying scream with painful eyes and torment. Help! She screamed before being silenced by the spirit entering her body through Fang's mouth. Lang cried, seeing her classmate now possessed, with sharp teeth, claws, two irises, and black cavities. She asked herself in disbelief. Fang attacked Lang, biting her shoulder while crying for help. Chaos ensued, shrouded in red. Ora Lee stated, The ghost has taken Fang Yuan. I will help her. I will protect her. I immediately activate the amulet and prepare to seal the ghost. Wang snapped his fingers while smiling, and Saidi did it calmly while holding the amulet, announcing the activation of the red chain amulet that appeared from Li's back. He shouted, Will Fang's power restriction be disabled by the chain that roars with hatred? Hurry, I can't hold it any longer. Seal it now! Li shouted, trying to keep his mantra active. I'm leaving, Yenning said with a satisfied smile. Professor Ta! She added, sticking the amulet on Lee's possessed back, who looked sweaty and gritted his teeth in anger. You, he angrily replied, you idiot, you put it in the wrong place. If you waste it like this, everyone will die. Lee said, turning the amulet, which shone with blue fire on his back. Oh, really? But when I put the amulet on your body, wasn't it Fang Yuan who fell? Yenning said, pointing towards Fang, while he looked at her confused. Fang lay unconscious on the ground, and you expressed disbelief that Uncle Lee was sealed, and Fang Yuan fell. Could it be that Uncle Lee was actually calm, and then declared that the professor was pretending to be Li Ping, who woke up and then used your will to transform into a fake female ghost to test the team's strength and confuse everyone? You tried to attack me first, but realized that I was a difficult target, so you directed your focus on Fang Yuan, who had weaker willpower. They said they were possessed, but it was actually your will controlling them. Then you pretended to fight the ghost and repeatedly talked about sealing Fang Yuan. You took advantage of the chaos to make them fail in their mission and used the system to eliminate those who were sitting on the ground with their heads bowed, refusing to believe. You said that if what you were saying was true, if I threw the amulet to Fang Yuan now, wouldn't we be cursed? Then you raised your hand focusing your power to make several energy balls float in the palm of your hand. When he said now that your power is sealed, you can stop pretending. Show me your true face. Throwing the ball towards Lee, they flew at full speed and hit him, cutting and piercing his body. The old man bent backwards as dark energy began to emerge from his body. His skin began to peel and melt until only the old crust remained. Then with a voice as rough as an old rusty gear, he spoke. I disguised myself very well. How could you find me? Changing into impatience, he answered, You have been sealed. Our mission is complete. Why should I tell you this? The old man stood with an evil smile, dense energy emanating from him as he spoke. Ah, you don't know that there is a hidden mission here. In the event of failure to complete this mission, you will not receive an SSS ranking. Our protagonist turned and asked the old man about the hidden mission. Then he began to speak with his wrinkled skin. You don't even know the reason why no one has ever received an SSS ranking for this underground prison. I can actually tell you that the mission is to make me disappear on my own. And if you tell me how you know that I am a ghost, I will make you do it, yawning as you listen, crossing your arms and thinking about it in the previous underground prison, the Dead People's Academy. If I didn't know there was a hidden mission from my past life, I might not have been able to get an SSS ranking. Unfortunately, at that time I didn't have time as I was busy with difficult tasks, and the army didn't allow me to enter underground spaces like that. Then turning to the creature, he declared for now, I believe in you, but before I tell you, you have to tell me why you need to know first. What he answered is because that's when Yenning understands you can awaken intelligence when the underground prison is reset. Previous memories can be retained. That's why it's better to expose your trump cards, learn any shortcomings in your plan, then perfect your disguise next time and deceive and kill more people who are awake. Wong looked at him in horror and said intelligently, I haven't heard it since the beginning of the apocalypse, if that's the problem. It's not an underground prison under the sea level anymore, but level B or even higher, this is a bug in the system. And the old ghost smiled and said, you're really smart, you're right. So will you tell me now? So Yenning signaled and started responding, it's quite simple. 
The first clue, the second of the mission, says don't believe the lies. The so-called female ghost never said anything for a moment because you didn't talk in the group chat. It means you can't use the system, let alone the clues. Only mention that Wang Fang allegedly committed an unclear suicide. But for the professor, it's certain. And finally, if the Jamat ceiling is used to seal Wang Fang. It should have been at the funeral, not at the professor's dormitory. So my assumption is that he was harassed by you. After that, he attempted suicide but was hospitalized in a mental institution and couldn't. He didn't sue you. His family asked for compensation from the school but failed. So they burned it as revenge before you die. Your will is contaminated, and you become what is called a ghost. Don't forget that haunting only occurs after the fire. Later, the school hired priest Tas to exorcise the ghost and seal you hanging, listening with a gaping jaw and saying quietly, Yes, indeed. All this time, we were all deceived by glancing without asking him at all. But even after finding the female ghost, not only was she not disturbed by her, but she remained calm. How impressive her will was. She was truly at the first level of the will system with her wrinkled skin and open teeth, and her evil smile answered you correctly. But your assumption was not entirely correct. First, the female ghost may not have spoken until she was sealed. Second, I didn't send any messages because I might be looking for clues. I am seeking Hong Xia's help, especially with Wang Fang's suicide suspicion combined with the appearance of a female ghost is the perfect combination. And finally, the dormitory is possibly the place where she was harassed, so it's normal for her to stay there. Yenning smiled contentedly and gestured, saying, You are right, it's not enough to convince you, but don't believe in lies. So of course I want to save the most important thing for last. If you want to know, disappear now. I will tell you in a few seconds before you vanish, laughing with joy. The entity replied, Yenning, you are impressive. I will do it now. The entity began to evaporate, disappearing into the air, saying, Speak quickly. Yenning said the most important thing angrily, realizing that she was in her final moments with only her head remaining. The entity screamed, Speak, you scoundrel! Yenning responded with a wicked smile, saying that the most important thing is that she was just guessing. A piece of the ghost's mouth was enough to curse Yenning's name weighing heavily on her as she disappeared before they both were surprised and asked what the ghost was really fooled by. Yenning pointed towards the exit door and said, There's no time to think about it. We can leave the basement now. But the girl insisted, Ed, Yenning, are you really just basing it on a guess? Our protagonist replied while laughing, Of course not. Her biggest weakness is saying that the amulet is in dorm 210. Besides." There are no clues indicating that only a ghost would do it. Yenning knew that. But why should she tell her? Seeing the cold stare she gave when saying the last sentence, the girl shivered and said, You're scarier than a ghost, but you're amazing. Without you, I wouldn't have gotten out of here alive. They then left the basement and rankings and rewards appeared. Yenning received a beaded bracelet named the Soul Bead which blocks psychic attacks and neutralizes serious damage. This one-time use item is great. It could save my life. Next time, he thought, looking at the shining purple beaded bracelet on his wrist. Then at the mission center in the safe zone of the heavenly wind at night, Yenning arrived at the location and went to the receptionist announcing, I am here to deliver the mission. The girl quickly recognized him and said, Aren't you Yenning who received four missions leveling up to level two last night? Have you completed any of them? Our protagonist remained silent and let the girl see for herself. Scared, she exclaimed, Heaven, all four of them. That's when she said, Can you quickly go where? He promptly responded by typing quickly and submitting the mission details. Yenning received a total of 7,300 credits. Our protagonist turned around smiling proudly in his cloak, and began walking, thinking it took less than a week to reach level two with the Sword God system, leveling up much faster than in his previous life. The receptionist clearly realized that this was unusual and thought it was very strange. I need to inform my boss immediately, he thought, picking up the phone to make contact, observing his current status. Yenning walked the streets, 
thinking about the lack of quality equipment bonuses at the moment. Not bad for level 2, but if I want to train my level B sword skills that I bought last time, I still need 23 points before each attribute reaches 20. One psychic piece can increase it, and after that, another 20 will be needed. Our main character purchased his own means of transportation and is now cruising through the city streets on his motorcycle. He believes that this amount of credit will be difficult to achieve the nice underground space in the Heavenly Wind District. Everything is now completed, except for the death factory located at the intersection with Junjiang. There is some very good blue equipment there that should be worth a lot of money, but there is something that catches his eye. A red swirl makes him look up and say, It is. He then gazes attentively at the sky. At the red light, he thought it was a sign of a zombie wave, even though in my previous life, a global zombie outbreak occurred a year later. Actually, the heavenly wind safe zone was suffering. The previous zombie wave siege resulted in many casualties, in my estimation, should be next week. Commander Shia should be informed immediately so that he can take preventive action as soon as possible upon takeoff. Shortly after Commander Xia received a personal message, he was confused by the contents of the message saying that within a week, the Heavenly Wind District would face a zombie wave. Please deploy your troops as soon as possible to ensure everyone's safety. The message was clear, but it still remains to be seen whether Zhao trusts Yenning enough to consider her words and avoid tragedy. If you enjoyed today's recap and want more content, subscribe to our channel to start this journey now, and I hope together we can strengthen this new community.